Hambini fans and welcome to another episode of Hambini Reams. In today's episode, a brand that we haven't had on the show before, this Willy from, is it actually from Triestina or is it from a suburb of Jamen? Who knows, but we'll find out. This is a Willia Triestina, I guess that's where they claim the thing was designed, uh, frame carbon and it was uh, sent to me by a viewer who uh, is actually into carbon as well. Um, and this frame was originally a BB386 frame and he sent it in because he couldn't get the bottom bracket out. Now the bottom bracket on this, which we'll come to in a bit, is from that well-known company that produces shite, Seabear. But we'll come to that in a minute. Anyway, the rest of the frame, oh God, I mean, to be honest, it's, it's crap. <laughs> it's crap. This is one of those adverts for the carbon repair industry, especially the ones in the south of the UK, that is just shit. I mean, if you, I just can't believe someone's done this. Anyway, we'll carry on. So to, just to sort of illustrate this as an example, if I show you the front mech hanger. So the front mech hanger, you could clearly see at some stage in its life was riveted. Well, it still is riveted. Someone's masked it off right, and just sprayed round it. I mean, how long does it take to drill four rivets out and then, you know, do the rest of it? So there's that. There's the, the bottom of the frame, which is here. I mean, if I take that off, that is the sort of the gear cable guide. Um, it's just scabby. Now, don't believe for one second this is an OE paint job. Um, so there we go. The next thing is I sprayed a bit of penetrating fluid on here and all the paint started to blister off. And that's because this bottom bracket was originally BB386 and it's been repaired to make it BB86. So that's where the alarm bells start kicking in. And then the fact that the guy said he couldn't get it out. This is the lower headset bearing landing. Um, there's remnants of red paint all the way around there. It's not the end of the world, it measures up okay, but the alignment between that side and the far side is not very good. I mean, I'm half thinking this could be a fake frame, but we don't know. This is the upper headset bearing, so it's obviously a tapered, headset, uh, tapered fork. The seat looks to be aluminium. Now, I haven't gone and scratched it completely to confirm it, but this has been machined, well, slightly on the piss because there's a, a lip round there and whichever scumbag cretin wanker went and machined it, they've, they've done it at a slight angle. So it's not quite square with the other one um, in the sense of the bike. See, your fork is slightly at an angle. Not very much, but it's there. This is the gear cable guide. It's a rim brake bike. Um, again, there's not, not really much to say about that other than whoever screwed this down hasn't waited for the paint to cure because um, there's a bit of a ridge there. Bottle holder bolt mounts, boss mounts, they look all right. There's loads of blistering around here and it, it may be difficult to see on camera, but there's a, uh, a join between the aluminium insert and the rest of the carbon frame. And it's at that point where the paint looks like it's blistered and just erupted. So the Sea Bear bottom bracket has like a plastic insert in it. The fastest way to get it out is to melt it. So I melted the plastic insert in the bottom, in the bottom bracket out. Um, here we go. So hello to all my friends in Sea Bearian Kingdom or whatever the fuck you want to call it. Sea Bearians, piece of shit. And here's the other part of the Seabarian cock. Got the uh, bottom bracket out from that side, so the non-drive side um, with a blind bearing puller. Obviously I can't show you that because it's um, X-rated. Um, yeah, I mean, it, this is just garbage really. All of the paint in this area around where the bottom bracket was sitting is just coming off. It's just like that, just coming off. So the chap, I did ring the chap to ask him and he, he wasn't really that bothered about it. Just from me feeling this, like a well-trained gynecologist, 
I can tell that the uh, balls in here are kind of like past it. It's a ceramic bottom bracket, um, but ceramic's not going to help you if, if the aperture that it goes in is not adequately sized. Seabear make their sh bottom brackets on the, on, I would say, too, too big. So that's one possibility. And the other fact is this was repaired by someone down south. Um, not that I've got anything against southerners, but it's a place that I know down south who's littered all over the internet, who graves blazes on about how good they are. Um, this is possibly a fuck up. Anyway, the, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my mic off. And put this. Hopefully you could hear that. So that's the sound of um, no bearing clearance. Now I need to get this side out. Uh, there's a couple of ways to do this. You could use a persuader. Um, persuaders come in all sorts of varieties, but this is, this is probably my favorite combination, an M12 set screw and a three pound hammer. Also use a blind bearing puller, but you know, people might cry if I use one of them, but I'm gonna use one of these, which is a uh, 6805 disc to do is we're going to take up the tension and then spray some free spray as we take up the tension hopefully it'll pop out oh it's tight it's tight she says that oh it's very tight I think we could be bottomed out there. Let's have a look. Oh, we've got it out. So shifted it a fair amount and then it'll have touched on there. So now we can change over to the, the long holder. Okay, same deal, but all I've done is just put a longer holder on um, so just give us the full travel. It should get the whole thing out this time. Oops. And there we go. This is that side of the frame where I've just removed it. The most obvious thing that you can see is the paint around here is all faded, which is a bit weird. Uh, and obviously it's flaked off as well. It's just loose. Not very good adhesion. To be honest, you should face that anyway, so it's not the end of the world. God, oh, this paint is awful. Look at that. It's just literally coming off, flaked off tin foil. If you look very carefully here you can see where the original shell was which is the BB386 and then the which is carbon and then the aluminium insert that's been put in afterwards which is uh, to take it from 46 mil to 41 mil so that's your two and a half mil wall thickness basically. I really believe this one this is aluminium so it should be bang on look at that absolutely outrageous complete crap and this is that piece of precision engineering from Belgium 41.08 I'd say that was on the uh, <laughs> the uh, high end of it now they'll probably say oh your caliper is not calibrated well I could get the mic out as well um, but yeah I mean that's just a lot um, the spec controls this it doesn't control this but if you ask me you know, 0.13 millimeters is just excessive interference, garbage. The shell's got some damage um, inside where it's picked up. It's not the end of the world because it's undersized, so we can take some material away there. Uh, it's just basically where it's galled, um, excessive interference, and that's what happened. Same thing happened on a Trek bike. Have a look through the archives. Right, it's that time of the show again. It is time for checking to see if the pen is working. And it is, right. When a pretentious fucking prick carbon expert from down south tries to sleeve a hole, you can tell that I'm slightly agitated and somewhat frustrated by this whole shenanigans. Um, yeah, I don't really know what to say to this. By Ambini, age five. 
you can fund or assist me in my journalistic career, which is, I'll be honest, somewhat more entertaining than my engineering career, but still, it doesn't pay anywhere near as well. On Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Hambini. Instabonk, Hambini Eng on Instabonk, be your wife's dream. And Facebonk, Hambini Eng on there, which is just literally what it is. Right, what is not good? First of all, the sea bear bottom bracket. Now, some might say that I'm a bit mean by saying this, but I'm going to play you some footage in a minute. The guy or girl, or let's just call it the organisation, because these days you can't refer to people as he, she, or whatever without causing some offence. The organisation that is sea bear is run by an unaccountable tosser. So it really, really fucks me off because he's made a mistake hasn't put his hand up, he's trying to shift the blame onto yours truly for not approaching him in the right way. But we'll come to that, right? The sleeve engineering, let's say, best practice or minimum is supposed to be like three mil, make the wall thickness three mil. This is less than that, <laughs> you can see that. Um, so that's one thing. There is no axial stop and the sleeve should be post machine. So you machine it after you put it in the hole or you account for the level of compression and then push it in the hole. Now, what you're about to see is the sea bear reaming from 2022. Yeah, just before we go any further, this is the spin test. And now I've got my trusty quick clamp and we're just gonna apply a little bit of pressure. It's miles out, absolutely miles out. If you go to the video, which is called Cannondale Reaming Goes Wrong, Sea Bear Snake Oil Exposed, and then go around and read the first comment, which is from Sea Bear. I've pinned it, and then you can see why I'm a bit annoyed. Some sleeving basics. So this is, let's call it the frame. And this is the sleeve. So when this guy from down south, this pretentious fucker, has put the sleeve in, all right, he has put no axial stop in. So he pushes the sleeve in like that, and he's actually left a small gap there. So there's no hard stop. He could have pushed it in a bit further, but then you run the risk of it overshooting so it sticks out. So if I draw it on this one, it would stick out like that. Yeah, and then you'd end up with a, a bit of a void there. So in order to counteract that, you put a stop into the male component and a corresponding stop into the female component. Um, this is what you would call a top hat design. Because if you looked at it from sideways on, and this is exaggerated, it would look like that with a hole all the way through. So that top hat design, and that locates it there. So you can't overpress it. Well, you could, you know, you could totally destroy it, but it gives you a hard stop. And the advantage to that is you get a flush finish. Now this frame doesn't have that. So that causes a bit of a problem. The other issue is you get relaxation. So when you put this in to any object, it starts to distort. Um, it starts to distort after machining because it stress relieves over time. So some materials are much worse than others. So I'm trying to think of, is it EN8? I think I once machined a shaft out of EN8. Yes, that is one of my hobbies. I machine stuff along with plowing stuff like hairdressers. But once you machine it, you know, you could leave it on the lathe and then go off to have your lunch or whatever, come back, and then you suddenly have a deflection of like 20, you know, a run out of 10 thou easily over lunchtime. Similar kind of thing happens when you sleeve thin wall sections, which is why my bottom brackets, when I machine them, I actually pre-machine them before I final machine them. So I pre-machine them to within about half a mil of the final thickness, and then do the final machining to get that last little bit. 
Now that half a mil may be or may not be the correct number. I might have just said that to throw those people, those people who like to copy my stuff, you know, uh, a bit of a curveball. Yeah, I'm looking at you, Ascent and SN Vitae. Don't think I don't know. Right, just before I go any further, I should just point out that I did speak to the guy and I said to him, look, if I'm going to be honest, this frame is really a scrapper. It would be irresponsible of me to say that you should go after a brand spanking new bottom bracket onto this frame because I just don't think it's cost effective. Uh, his response was he just wanted the absolute minimum scope that he could just get away with. He was going to stick it on his turbo trainer and then go from there. Um, so we agreed that we just machined through the uh, the middle of it. He didn't want it facing, and to be honest, I wouldn't recommend it recommend it to be faced because you've got that level mismatch. So if you face it, you're going towards the furthest dimension away, so it could mess up your chain line and do all sorts. This is the non-drive side post machining. So we've got forty point nine seven. So that's back bang in the middle of the tolerance. This is the drive side and post machining it is 40.95. Gauge test 40.95 this is basically size for size so it goes in but if I push it a bit harder I'm going to get it stuck but it will go in and get stuck but that's the limit value. On the other side Yeah, that one's going in but again if i push in a bit harder it'll get stuck but that's on the way in previously there was no chance now that brings us to the end of this video that's one of these jobs which i really hated doing and it was probably well it's not the perfect fix but it's a cost effective option i guess if you've got any questions or comments please put them in the box below and i'll do my best to answer them and as always keep banging your hairdresser <laughs>